Pro Group Management. Workers' comp that works for you. Welcome to Nevada News Makers on the broadcast today. Congressman Mark Amaday just won his race again for CD2. He's here for the whole show on an all-new Nevada Newsmakers. Hello, is this D&D Roofing? Yes, it is. How may I help you? You did such a great job on my roof. May I speak to the owner? I am an owner. Oh, can I speak to your supervisor? Sure. How may I help you? I love your work. May I speak to the owner? I am an owner. We're all owners. Well, that's why at D&D we work so hard to keep your home safe and sound. Oh, no wonder. D&D Roofing and Sheet Metal. Local, employee-owned, here for you. Like a traditional handmade basket, retail is woven into the fabric of life in Nevada. From big box to mom and pop, retail supports our communities in countless ways. Jobs for the disabled, team uniforms for kids, help for the elderly, and so much more. Retail employs over 1 in 10 workers. Retail supports Nevada, and we support retail. R-A-N-N-V dot org. Pro Group Management offers workers' comp services to a growing number of industries. As businesses grow and change with the times, the need for a solid workers' comp program must be flexible and up-to-date. The evolving nature of regulations can make staying ahead of complex tasks challenging. But Pro Group Management simplifies the work so your industry can move forward and succeed. Pro Group Management. Workers' comp that works for you. This is Nevada Newsmakers with host Sam Shad, a no holds barred political forum. Now, from the Nevada Newsmakers broadcast headquarters, here is Sam Shad. And back on Nevada Newsmakers, we're always pleased to welcome back to the program Congressman Mark Amaday of CD2. Pleasure to have you back on the program, and congratulations on your reelection. Thanks, Sam. Thanks for having me on. Um, always a pleasure. Uh, we're taping this on the morning of November 10th. Yeah. The AP and every other major news organization has called on the election for. Uh, Vice President, or oh, President-elect, I should say, Joe Biden. Um, not every Republican has. What is your position on this? Well, um, I, I mean, I think Christy Nome put it pretty well the other day where she said, hey, if there's some questions, um, uh, when, when it was uh, Al Gore, that was 37 days, not that it'll probably take that, but um, I don't think it's improper to give the existing administration a chance to take a look to see what they can develop in terms of if there were irregularities. Um, it's it's a high bar. It's it's you know you got I think it's four states or something like that, and it's a lot of votes. So it's it's one of those things where it's like quite frankly, January twentieth is a long ways away still. Um, seems like forever, and, and the poor people of Georgia, it probably seems like years. But uh, but anyhow, it's like so we're uh, a week down the road, and, and there's still some things that the administration is working on, and you know uh, so let's give them a little bit of time and see what see what goes on. Um, there have been concerns raised that there may be mischief uh, prior to the transfer of power. Do you have concerns about that? You know what, as, as long as we validate the election process, and I think the election process for the most part, I mean, I'm most familiar with Nevada. It's like, guess what? Um, you know, in the, in the 11 counties that we pay the, the closest attention to, I don't think you have any serious problems. There may be some glitches here or there. But, but in terms of widespread fraud or something like that, um, I'm not seeing any of that. So um, I think part of the challenge for um, the 70 plus million people that voted for the president was not to be like those folks that quite frankly the president campaigned against who were you know, breaking things, spitting on law enforcement, doing that sort of stuff. So I'm hoping that the, the, that the, uh, the hypocrisy thing is something that it's like we feel very strongly about about President Trump, but but acting like the folks that we don't agree with isn't the answer. Um, I think one of the things that was a surprise, at least to me, but I think to a lot of other people, um, was the strength of the Republican vote in the state of Nevada, yeah. where it had been written off uh, as leaning uh, blue, uh, in the blue column uh, over the last several cycles. And yet, State Senator Ivana Cancella was on the program a week or so ago, and she headed up the Biden campaign in Nevada. 
and, and she threw cold water on that. She said most of the races in Nevada are decided between three to five percent. And what we've seen in, in CD3 and 4 would certainly point to the fact um, that it's much closer than we've been led to believe. Yeah, and, and, and I, I mean, y you know, the challenge going forward, you've alluded to it, is quite frankly, regardless of how things turn out, you've got to move on. Although it's interesting, people are already going, 2022. And, and so, but, but you look at that and it's like, you know, you're sitting there going, those two congressional districts, Dina's is, is one that has built very strong deregistration and it acts like that. But those other two, which quite frankly, I think people considered Democrat seats, Joe Heck did a heck of a job of holding that one for as long as he wanted to. But nonetheless, the, the, the tightness there is something that, that I, I think is reality for the time being until, uh, you know, it'll be interesting to see how Nancy Pelosi's little dumpster fire there in terms of what do we want to be when we grow up works itself out. Because in Nevada, I think quite frankly, you know, people do not take peace in the fact that, that you want to defund law enforcement or that you want to do stuff that quite frankly shuffles the economic thing. Because right now, Sam, I mean, you want to talk about Nevada and the majority of Nevada, Las Vegas is, is I don't want to be dramatic, but, but let's put it this way. If you drive down the strip right now and hang a left on Tropicana going to the airport, there's no traffic. A and so it's like, hey, as we move forward out of the pandemic and out of this cycle, um, quite frankly, there's a l it'll never be like it was before, but you got to get on with moving on to something that makes some sense for people earning a living, people having good health, people having uh, confidence in the education system that's going on. And, and just basically the basic functions of their government, whether it's local, state, or federal. And so there's work to be done in all of those areas. Um, and I, I did want to point out, President Hardy was also somebody back in 2014 yeah. um, that flipped CD4. And so, um, I, you know, this is a time for us to all take a breath and kind of think about things. Um, it, it seems to me that, you know, Senator Reid, um, after his battle with John Ensign, and the last one, uh, where he almost lost just by a few hundred points, yep. uh, or votes rather, um, that he decided that that was never going to happen to him again. And he organized the Democratic Party in the state of Nevada and built the famed Reed machine. Um, the Republicans have really not been able to accomplish that. And you were the head of state Republican Party for a time. You are very well liked in rural Nevada, not just in your district, but across the state. Um, but it, it, it seems like if there was better organization of the state party for the Republicans, that they would do better in elections, as proven by the voting totals so far in this election. Yep. Well, th the challenge is this. Quite frankly, on the, on the R side, you've had a culture that is dominated by consultants. And consultants aren't evil people, but quite frankly, every cycle, you've got a different mix of consultants. Maybe there's the same ones, but there's, and so they're all starting to build from zero. And, and, and you don't have to be real strong to know that it's like that's phenomenally inefficient. And maybe some cycles you build better than you do others. They did a pretty good job this cycle of building and turning out. Um, it's, it's just that, and, and you know, Sam, the thing we haven't talked about is, it's like there's this huge chunk in the middle that's called the independent American, the, the nonpartisan, all those other things whose numbers are getting big enough to where it's like, you better have a plan for those folks, whether you're a Democrat or a Republican, because quite frankly, they're the ones who are deciding the races in terms of which way they break. Look at the closeness of the races, whether you're looking at those congressional races down south or even in, here in Washoe where there's, th there was a bunch of them that were within a few points and so, well, there, there are those that would say that the reason that President Trump was elected in the first place was the number of people who were dissatisfied with politicians of either Republican or Democratic Party yeah. of making all these promises over the years and then not following through with them. And suddenly you have somebody on the scene who has name recognition from years on, of being on television, um, has developed a character and an attitude about negotiating and saying whatever's on his mind. And a lot of disaffected Republicans and Democrats voted for him because of that. Yeah. And, and those people are available um, to be flipped from one party to the other if the right candidate is there. Well, and Nevada's always been famous. I, you, you mentioned Harry Reid. I mean, I remember his poster one cycle that said, independent like Nevada. 
And so Nevada is one of those places, at least historically, where it's been, you know, I mean, Michael Callahan is probably one of the best governors of the state of Nevada. Democrat, universally loved. I don't know what his percentages were. Um, and, and then you get a Paul Laxall way back and, and, and some of that stuff com coming forward. I mean, Richard Bryan is a guy who, who I th think still enjoys a very good reputation, is seen as a, as a good public servant. So when you put all that stuff in there, it's like, listen, I think you have to, it's still the old fashioned thing. You better figure out a way to connect with voters. And quite frankly, how you connect, I believe is that's how you connect, not with how you burn the other side down because that's the old default thing that, that I think when push comes to shove, unless the other side's dumb enough to be sucked into that, it's, it's the connection will win over the negativity, I believe. Well, also the money. I mean, if you look at Kenny Gwynn's race for governor, uh, he initially raised $3 million at a time when $3 million was a really was a large amount of money. Of money. And not only did he, and, and I always give Pete Ernott credit for this, um, Pete had that campaign out in rural Nevada uh, with barbecues and picnics and everything else. Yep. And, and so it was a personality thing. Uh, Kenny Gwynn was somebody who loved to talk to people, as you know. On this program, we would always joke that he did 30 minutes on the show and 45 minutes in the hallway after the program because yeah. he just loved to converse with people. Um, and he built up this huge following, uh, but based on a very strong campaign across the state of connection, which is what you're talking about. Which, which tr another way of saying that was great candidate and also did a great job um, in, in the case of Governor Gwynn. And so it's, it's like, you know, be, being yourself, he didn't have to. He didn't have to get down into the thing of whoever he was running against was a dirty, rotten, you know, it's like, hey, this is, this is, the, per this is the candidate. That's who I'm supporting. So it didn't even go to, well, you know, we're going to have to take so-and-so down a few notches or something like that. So it, it'll be interesting going forward from here. Very polarized. I, I mean, close state, close country. It's like there's, there's room for some actual performance as opposed to the rhetoric. We'll see if, uh, if the rhetoric addicts can be, uh, can be given the cure. All right, let's take a break. We'll come back much more with Congressman Mark Amaday after this timeout. Tamarack Casino is giving away $100,000 through November 28th. You heard that right. Tamarack is giving away $100,000 guaranteed. Every Friday and Saturday, Tamarack will give away $5,000 nightly. And on October 30th and November 28th, Tamarack will be giving away $20,000 in all cash grand prizes guaranteed. Don't miss your chance to win big. Ooh, your good times at Tamarack. Your good times are at Tamarack. Because of UMC, I'm putting my free time to good use. Because of UMC, she keeps me on my toes. Because of UMC and this guy, I'm here. UMC, the highest level of care in Nevada. The signs and symptoms of cataracts can start out small with subtle changes in your vision. So don't wait. Be proactive and take your vision into your own hands. If you're experiencing the onset of cataracts or just have questions, contact your eye care professional or call Eye Care Associates of Nevada today. Dr. Hiss has years of experience specializing in the surgical correction of eye disorders and has completed over 84,000 vision correcting procedures. At Eye Care Associates of Nevada, we'll change the way you look at the world. Dad? Why are you learning? This place is great. Huh? You gotta try this. <laughs> wow! This stuff is great! People are gonna love it! Yes. Yes, they will. This is Nevada Newsmakers. And back on Nevada Newsmakers, we continue our conversation with Congressman Mark Amaday of CD2. Um, you talk about the polarization, and nobody will argue with you about that, but you also talked about this large group of people, the independents, the nonpartisans. Um, so my question to you is, you know, 
I consider you a moderate Republican. Yes, you are a member of Team Republican, and you proudly say that and did when you were running the state for uh, Donald Trump's first election campaign. Um, but what are the areas that you look at where crossing the aisle makes sense? What things that will give the public in general more faith in the ability for politicians of both sides to work together for the good of the country? Well, keep in mind that, that, that my first thought is everything that gets uber politicized in a policy sense gets ruined. So w when you sit there to answer your question, you say, listen, coronavirus, pandemic relief, pandemic fight, those sorts of things are like, that really shouldn't be about independent Republican or Democrat. That should be about, you know, we've had some good, good news today on, on a Pfizer uh, uh, vaccine that's, that's north of 90% effective and all that sorts, good. Now, what do you do for those people that are in the hospital? You know, you've got some emergency authorizations, that stuff. Now, what do you do for the economy on that? What do you do for, for PPP? What do you do for schools? What do you do for higher ed? What do you do for hospitals and physicians and Medicare providers? What do you do with respect to, is the National Guard still a resource that you need for district? I mean, there's a lot of stuff there that quite frankly, Sam, I, I fail to see the Democrat versus Republican stuff. Immigration's another one people go, did he just say immigration? Immigration's not hard to solve. You just have to get the demagogues on both sides out of it. And, and, and on one side, it's like the border should be open. No, they shouldn't. And on the other side is anything that you do is, is uh, um, amnesty. No, it's not. There's plenty of room in the middle to do something responsible and deal with this going forward. And by the way, Republicans, I, I just read something that said, guess what? Hispanic folks along the border broke for Trump. So can we stop this, this mindless stereotyping of, oh, well, you know, if you're, for, if you're for any kind of reform, then you're for amnesty. And if you're, and, and if you're not for doing something responsible, then quite frankly, the wall isn't evil and neither is providing a way for dreamers to get, you know, green card, citizenship, whatever, as long as you're not a, a gang all-star and stuff like that. It's not hard policy-wise, but the politics are totally screwing it up. So All there's right. a couple big areas. All right. Well, you certainly have a really big one there, which didn't, well, it, to an extent it came up in the campaign, but it wasn't uh, as large a part of the campaign as it could have been, which is immigration. It's been 34 years since, uh, since Reagan, Reagan. Yeah, since yeah. Reagan uh, signed the bill in 86, and that started in 77 to get that done. Um, so it takes a long time. Do you think that... If, if the president goes along with Harry Reid's suggestion that if the Republicans don't come to the table, that within three weeks the filibuster should be out the door, that that would help get immigration and other issues of that size done. Because, I, and you know, I, I'm a couple of years older than you, but you know, I watched that immigration debate very closely. It was my understanding of how the system worked. And it was like almost every step, there was somebody who could throw a hand grenade in there and blow that up on both sides. It wasn't just one side. And it wasn't till the very end that the major players came in and said, okay, we're gonna get this done. If you get rid of the filibuster, can you get things like immigration done with a simple majority? And, and would you like to see that? Well, first of all, if you get rid of the filibuster and some of the stuff that's talked about, then what you have is you have six year you have a six year term house, and, and quite frankly, we've already got a house. And, and I'm not being mean to the house since I'm in it, but the house is real simple. The side with the most votes wins. If you want to make the Senate the same as the house, then why do you have them? Quite frankly, it's it's if if people are really looking at the policy, and you can defend what you're doing, whether you're a Republican or a Democrat. You can end a filibuster with 67 votes. So it's not like a oh, filibuster, it's over. It's like find the 67 votes to say, Boy, no, but thank that, you. But that's incredible, you know, well, that's incredibly difficult. I mean, Harry Reid, when he had 60 votes to get Obamacare passed, had three senators who were holding him up for ransom. So, I mean, even if you have the, the 60 votes in your house, you still can't get it done. Well, let me just tell you this. When Senator Reid was the majority leader, he got rid of the voting requirements for Supreme Court justices. I think that was a mistake. 
Hey, and I'm not, I'm not a critic of Senator Reid. I mean, you know, he's a Nevadan, blah, blah, blah. I'm just saying, guess what? That was a mistake. You think that in 2020 hindsight, in 2020 and 2019, it's like you've got three people sitting on the Supreme Court now who only needed 51 votes. And quite frankly, that isn't the way it was designed. And so as I sit here as a guy, Sam, from a small state representing the smaller portion of the state, anything that just says folks with the votes, most votes wins, it's like I can exist in that because I have. But quite frankly, I'm not going to pick that because I need some safeguards. And while Catherine and Jackie are the people in the Senate right now, and maybe that's, that's good or bad for what a Nevada issue is, it's like it was set up that way so that it wasn't just the city with the most people and it gets to tell the farmers what to do. And so I start there and then you go into the modern stuff and it's like, if you can't find the 67 votes, and quite frankly, Sam, I call that a failure of leadership. That's Chuck Schumer and, and that's also Mitch McConnell. If you guys can't figure it out, if you're just walking back to your own things, then shame on you because your body is the one that's supposed to be able to rise above this to some extent and get the right thing done. And so if it's like, well, we can't do that, then it's like, guess what? Maybe you're not good. Maybe you're not fit for the job. Because if you can't go find 67 votes to sit Rand Paul down or to sit, you know, um, uh, whoever down on the other side, then, it, then it's like, well, quite frankly, if you've got any respect for, for, your, for your institution, you better find a way to do that. You can also go out and find a Jim Jeffers who is prepared to take a committee chairmanship and become an independent caucusing with your group. Yeah. It's another way to do it. Well, but I mean, <laughs> Harry did that with, with <laughs> no, uh, what's his name? <laughs> it's like, saying. come on, be a leader. <laughs> Let's take another break. We'll be right back. <laughs> Dimitri Prine here for Design Outdoor. Come visit Design Outdoor's store and backyard to see our wide selection of fire pits, barbecues, and pizza ovens, natural stone water features, and fountains, and frost-proof pottery. Our store and backyard are located at 11600 South Virginia, just north of DeMonte Ranch Parkway. Visit designoutdoor.com or call us at 851-9499. I can't do it. Stupid, like my mom. We can't do anything at Mommy's because you won't pay child support. Dad said you cheated, and he's not even sure he's my dad. Mommy said you left both of us, so she isn't going to let me see you. I look just like my father. I'm divorce attorney Marilyn York, and I may represent men, but hate has no gender, only casualties. Please, stop sacrificing your children in your war against your ex. Everyone is talking about opioids. But they're not the only drugs that can be harmful if taken in large quantities or not as prescribed. You also need to be aware of side effects from anxiety drugs, muscle relaxants, sleep aids, and stimulants. Mixing prescription drugs with other drugs or alcohol can be dangerous. If you take Ambien with a glass of wine, it may be enough to stop you from breathing. Prescribed drugs can be just as dangerous as illegal drugs. Take medications only as directed. Tamarack Casino is giving away $100,000 through November 28th. You heard that right. Tamarack is giving away $100,000 guaranteed. Every Friday and Saturday, Tamarack will give away $5,000 nightly. And on October 30th and November 28th, Tamarack will be giving away $20,000 in all cash grand prizes guaranteed. Don't miss your chance to win big. Ooh, your good times at Tamarack. Your good times are at Tamarack. This is Nevada Newsmakers. And back on Nevada Newsmakers, we continue our conversation with Congressman Mark Amaday of CD2. Um, in talking to uh, Dina Titus, um, after I spoke with you in D.C., um, she did not think that the Clark County East Lands Bill was going to happen, and she seemed perfectly happy with that. What do you feel is going to happen with the lands bills in northern Nevada? Well, I, I mean, w w we've kind of done the work where it's like, um, Senator Cortez Mastos got a bill that's pretty close to ours. Um, she introduced it in the, in the Senate, but, but I'll tell you, as we sit here now, I, I don't think anything's going to happen organically in the conference process. So one of the other balls in the air in all of this interim stuff is um, we, we've reached out to the White House and said, if you guys don't, don't call McConnell and uh, Inhofe and tell them you got to put the Fallon stuff in there, it ain't going to happen. And quite frankly, um, you know, a lot of people say, well, this is lands and whatever. It's like, I got news for you, ladies and gentlemen. 
Um, there's some folks in Alaska that think that the Navy and the Air Force ought to be training up there because they've got large reservations. Now, that's not the Navy's first pick or the Air Force's first pick, but, you know, we're, we're going to get a little cute about all this stuff. It's not going to happen, and, and they're going to have to go up there. And I'm not saying that for drama. Uh, that happened in Puerto Rico a few years back. They're okay. not there anymore. But is this not must-pass legislation in the lame duck? No, I, I think the defense authorization bill is. The question is... Right now, if you just don't put anything else in it, they've got 25-year extensions. But the problem, Sam, isn't just the extension. It's modern technology means you need larger areas to fly those munitions into their targets. It's not like the old days where you look out the window and pickle a bomb off. Um, and, and by the way, the SEALs are training out there. So when you shoot a 50 caliber round, it goes a long ways. And so when you talk about safety, even though most of those lands aren't the subject of kinetic energy and detonation and all that, for safety's sake, you need that. The ultimate irony is if you're a resource person, there are many more resources in a Department of Defense budget to do cultural resources, natural resource stuff, than there are in, in, in the Department of Interior. So the irony is like, you know what? Congratulations, you might have won. And so we're just going to hope that it doesn't burn and that sage can continue to breed out there. But, you know, if, if it doesn't go that way, then the land will be in much worse shape because, quite frankly, there's no federal resources available for it as an interior acre versus a defense acre. Okay, so last quick question. If you're a betting man, um, you think this is going to get done before the end of the lame duck? Oh yeah, they'll pass a they'll pass a defense authorization bill. The but, question but it is, might not be in it. Is the is the expansion language in it? And and does that include all the other lands bills in northern Nevada? Well, well it, it does, but for the most part, I mean, there's good things in there. It takes the rubies off the table. Right. Churchill County's got extensive stuff. They're the host county. No, no, I, so, I understand. Yeah. So so yeah. so so it's all in there. It, it needs to be all in there, or otherwise people will have legitimate complaints. All right, and that's where we've got to leave it. Always a pleasure to have you on the program, sir. And again, congratulations on your re-election. Thank you, sir. And we'll be right back. A bird's eye captures its surroundings at different heights. At Brian Culp of Photography, we can make your imagination soar over buildings, parks, cityscapes, and beyond. Brian's images tell the story and get the job done. If you need a new perspective to tell your story, contact Brian today. Brian Culpa Photography. Experience the bird's eye view at brianculpaphotography.com. Hi, my name's Marilyn Miner, and I'm sure you'd agree that Nevada's a very special place to live. I was born here, and my husband and I have raised our family here. I feel it's a privilege to live and work in the Truckee Meadows. I especially enjoy helping my clients reach their real estate goals. Sometimes the smallest details provide the greatest satisfaction. I'd be complimented to talk to you about your next move. Call Marilyn Miner at Dixon Realty, 742-1280, or log on to MarilynMiner.com. Safety. We all think about it. You think about it when he buckles in, when you check your mirrors and put away your phone. RTC thinks about safety, too. In fact, we create it. Center turn lanes mean fewer blind spots. Bike lanes keep cyclists and you safe. Roundabouts reduce injury collisions, and all these crosswalks are designed to keep families like yours safe. Safety is your priority, and it's ours too. Every day, in everything we do. Pro Group Management specializes in providing industries with the necessary components to satisfy and exceed workers' comp requirements. Every business has unique needs and specific regulations. Pro Group Management stays ahead of the curve, providing up-to-date services to keep your industry in top form. Discover how we simplify your tasks, improve efficiency, and reduce expense to keep you moving in a positive direction. Pro Group Management. Workers' comp that works for you. Watch Nevada Newsmakers on YouTube. You can do that now these days. We'll see you on the next broadcast.